Welcome to Real Foot Forward, a West Tennessee podcast from Discovery Park of America in Union City, Tennessee. Today's episode is brought to you by Union City, Tennessee. Thank you, Emily. Welcome, everybody, to Real Foot Forward, a West Tennessee podcast where we explore the history, the people, and the culture of our home in West Tennessee. I'm your host, Scott Williams. Okay, Emily, before I introduce today's very special guest, what's something you have discovered this week at Discovery Park of America? Most people know of our turtles and our snakes and fish that we have in our wildlife, but some of the lesser known animals that we have are flying squirrels, cockroaches, centipedes, and even scorpions. That is very uh, interesting, and I've been back there before and seen all those behind-the-scenes animals that they use for educating. I was actually at an event Saturday at Eagle Fest at Real Foot Lake, and Groot the snake was uh, there with us. He made quite an impression. A lot of people wouldn't come near us, but a lot of people loved it. So <laughs> it was great to have him. And he's albino as well. That's so right. he's extra special. Yeah, he's very unusual. He's a very friendly snake. So, well, our special guest today is Taylor Wilson. Uh, Taylor has written a book, Glove Letters, a story of perseverance, prayer, and baseball. Welcome, Taylor. Hello. How are y'all? Fantastic. Now, um, I've I've done a little bit of research, but I understand from uh, what I've read that it says you come from a long line of storytellers, educators, and farmers. So tell us a little bit about where you hail from. Oh, I come from Haywood County, uh, Brownsville, Tennessee. Um, we got on, on the water tower, we got a good place to live, but we would have put great, but we didn't want to be bragging. <laughs> so did you uh have you have you been there your whole entire life uh they let me out to go to college i think to make something of myself and i'm not so sure i got that accomplished but yeah i've been here the whole time i actually grew i'm, I'm actually living in the house i grew up in um my dad sold it to me and said good luck uh I'm, i was a boomer boomerang kid i came back and he said well if you're coming back i'm leaving so that's kind of the way it worked out uh, been here all my life. Yes, sir. And do you know, uh, your, are, were your grandparents, at, at what point did your ancestors settle in the area? I couldn't go back any farther than to tell you I'm like most West Tennessean Scotch Irish, you know. Um, that's that's probably about the best I can do on my lineage back. I hadn't spent a whole lot of time on Ancestry.com. I know a little bit here or there, but, but uh, for as long as I know we've been here, we've been planting seeds either in the mind or in the ground. And uh, as far as telling the stories, I guess they've always grown a little bit outlandish, but that's kind of what makes a good story anyway, I suppose. Well, my uh, my people are from the uh, Zion Baptist Church community and the Holly Grove Baptist Church community, so about 10 miles away from where I think you are, uh, yeah. but in the same neighborhood. Yeah, I've, uh, I've got, you know, some of, some of my relatives were proper in uh, city folks and some of my other was from out in the rural areas of the county. Uh, Stoggum Bottom was one place they they call it, and I don't know. It kind of sounds like something out of Old Brother, but that's <laughs> a name that a local name they say is Stoggum Bottom, which is is kind of funny in itself. And I promise you, there's a lot of storytellers from that area. Well, I noticed that you and I have 63 mutual friends on Facebook, so uh, we have uh, some of the same connections, so that's good. I, I friended you on there, by the way, so if you'll All have right. me, we can be Facebook. Oh, yeah, that, that'd be great. Uh, I'm always glad to have a friend, especially so one you, that'll, that'll admit they're my friend. <laughs> <laughs> so you uh, grew up there in Brownsville, and uh, your family were farmers um, and educators? Yeah, farmers and teachers. Um my grandfather was superintendent at the high school, principal at the high school, and um, all kind of folks in education. And then on my other side of my family, a lot of farmers, a lot of farmers. I One time, um, I was in the newspaper business, magazine newspaper business, for like 30 years, 25, 30 years. And, of course, the Internet internet claimed that pretty much. And so, well, I got to go get another job. And, and I went to the University of Memphis and did a job uh some kind of test that tells you what you're going to be. 
it came back. You need, you either need to be a farmer or a teacher. <laughs> so you, you don't, you, you, you can't outrun your influences. Maybe it's <laughs> DNA. I don't know, but, but it, you can't outrun the people that put their mark on you. You know, they, they put their stamp on you. And I went back into education cause it was, it was a, it was an easy way for me to get back and it, and it involved writing, editing and English and creative writing and all that stuff I already was involved in. Now, um, I know you were a reporter, um, an editor, and a uh, photographer. Uh, what uh, publication did you write for primarily? I've written for a lot of magazines, a lot of websites, uh, ESPN Outdoors, um, Mid-South Hunting and Fishing News, Sports Field, did a little bit in Ducks Unlimited, just about all of the titles I had, I had a byline in somewhere along the lines. I did... Um, Mid South Hunting and Fishing News and Bill Dance. I've I've written a bulk of my career was with was with them, the outdoor stuff. And I was with the Jackson Sun for seven or eight years, probably. I can't remember for exactly how long, but I did a little bit of everything there. Features, sports, uh, mainly outdoor stuff. And so um we're gonna uh talk a little bit about the book that you've written um after um your son Landon had an accident and then um, has been recovering and has recovered. Um, but had you already published a couple of books before then? Yeah, I did. Um, it was, I've done two books of columns. Um, most of them, you know, all of them were outdoor, outdoor columns, hunting, fishing, hiking, anything to do with outdoors. And they, they ran in all these publications I was telling you about. Um, Mid South, Jackson Sun, uh, wherever they'd been published in different spots, uh, ESPN Outdoors, um, and and they were all outdoor columns. Uh, the name of the books were um, Backwater Briars and other things I've stepped in, and then then the other one was Return to Backwater Briars, still stepping in stuff, and uh, <laughs> I've I've really stepped in a lot of stuff in my life, so. <laughs> that's great Those so great i had to kind of I, I had to write it you know so watch your step is what i wrote in every book you know i sign it and watch your step yeah that's kind of how it goes so you 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 got married and have children um how many children do you have i just have the one son okay landon, so you just got the book mm -hmm. got landon and then uh tell us a little bit about uh his accident okay he was um he was he was he was being recruited for some colleges and they told him if he would up his velocity, uh, basically be able to throw fast throw with more speed, uh, he could, he could, the level of college he's looking at him would, would move up, you know, a, a different, um, it sounds kind of cliche, another level, but, uh, bigger colleges would look at him and gain interest. So with pitching, you know, everybody thinks about your arms, but there's so much of it that's in your legs. And he was, he was jogging and running. And um, he got hit, got hit by a, a truck and a trailer and the truck did damage, but the trailer really did a lot of damage um, within sight of my house. Um, mm. And and the thing about it, I, as I mentioned in the book, I, I something was bothering me, something was bugging me. And I'd sit in the driveway every day and pray, you know, please, you know, look over my family and friends. And there was like a shadow or something, you know, something in the, something in the peripheral, something out there is bad coming down the road. Uh, but, uh, and then this happened and it's, it, I drive by the spot every day. And, um, but anyway, it, that he got hit within uh, less than probably a quarter mile, my driveway on a, on a small rural road. And how did you find out he had been hit? I, I looked out, I looked, I was, I was cooking and I, cooking supper and I looked out and I saw the blue lights and I mm. turned around and I told my wife, I said, start praying right now. Cause I, mm. I knew and I stomped it. And I, I kind of start off the book with that. And, and the book kind of starts off. I'm going to take you somewhere dark, but, um, and, and I've got a lot of quotes in the book. And of course I do. Hello, darkness, my old friend, uh, Simon and Garfunkel. But, but I, 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 I say, I, I tell you, I tell readers, I say, if you hang in there with me, <laughs> I don't mean to take you this place first, but this is where we're coming from. Hang right. on. We're coming, we're coming out of it, but I'm about to take you somewhere real dark. And, 
And I, I had to drive by that spot. I still drive by that spot every, you know, multiple times a day and I'm getting better at it, but, but it's a tough thing to do. Um, I, I went from telling myself that's where he got hurt to, to that's where he lived. That's where he survived. You know, mm -hmm. that's where this journey began. You know, it, it's, it's heavy stuff if you're a dad, you know, but, um, we made it. <laughs> Well, of course, that's every parent's uh, nightmare. Um, but uh, spoiler alert, um, he is uh, doing great now. And we're going to find out a little bit more about that. Um, was he taken immediately by helicopter to Memphis? Yeah, the helicopter came down um, and got him. <clears throat> he was taken straight to the med downtown. We call it the med. I think it's, it's got a new name now. I don't know exactly what um, the official name is, but it's the regional. I think it's the regional, regional one, one medical one center. Medical center, Elvis Presley Trauma Center. There we go. There I think. Go. And um, yeah, it, it, and then, and they've been another. We we've got a life wing based in our county, and that one had been out, for, and I'd got a note that. Um, I teach school and one of the students parents had been involved in an accident well that chopper went and got them well this one had had to come from Jackson to pick to pick Landon up and it was um, oddly enough my uncle it was right near the driveway of my uncle's house where he had fallen and gotten injured in a helicopter he landed almost in the exact same spot and picked him up but it's kind of a traumatic thing. Of course, Landon, that day we'd gotten, um, he got a 29 on the ACT and the magic number is the 30. And we had that on the, on the island where I was cooking that night. And when the helicopter's taking him away, he said, hey, I made a 29 on my ACT today. I'm going to make a 30 <laughs> next time I take it. And, you know, and I don't know if it was the meds or anything else, but, but um, I quote a lot of things he said, you know, at the accident, but it was really horrific. Um, and, and our neighbors, our it was basically in our neighbor's yard and they came down and, and, um, they were there with him, you know, somebody to know that knew him. And my brother-in-law was a, one of the first people to arrive. He was on the police force. So looking back on it, uh, familiar faces and that kind of traumatic experience, you know, I'm, it's really a blessing that it worked out like that, you know, um, well, you've touched on a couple of things that people who might not live in rural communities don't realize. The first is uh, the importance of helicopter transportation whenever there's an accident um, um, because there aren't big medical centers like that nearby. So uh, one of the first things everyone encouraged me to do was sign up for the insurance that covers the helicopter, helicopter uh, is true. trip. So I've got, so I have that now and I make sure we get that renewed constantly because that can be a real blessing, I'm sure. And then also these small rural roads, uh, folks are driving down the roads. They're not always used to seeing a person running or a bike, oh, yeah. a bike on these no, roads. It scares me. No shoulder. Yeah. Yeah. All that. And, uh, I kind of get into that in the book too. And that, um, that helicopter, it, the, as far as us having that kind of trauma center that close by. I tell people all the time, I said, look, uh, if you're with the blessing of being a, a helicopter ride from the med, if, if they can get you there, you got a chance. <laughs> and and the stories that they tell, and I go into being at Ground Zero and and all the weird things that were going on and at, at Ground Zero in downtown Memphis um, in the book, too. And it, Trauma Center is, you don't understand Trauma Center until you're at Ground Zero with all the other gurneys and carts and people around you. It, it was, it, it was, you know, just amazing to see what they can do um, in a heartbeat, you know, just amazing to me. And was this in uh, 2018? 2018, October, well, 2017, October 26, okay. Landon turned 18 a week to the day before. Oh. Uh, uh, everything's looking up, everything's going great. And here we go. Um, get on this roller coaster and let's, let's see how y'all survive it. <laughs> and so the, the, the doctors, when they came out to first talk to you and your wife, um, what, what did they have to say? Well, they came in and said, you know, we point blank, we removed his arm and we, we knew that, you know, and I was worried, most worried about his leg because I knew his leg was really messed up. 
And um, but but Landon told him they to, evidently they told him on the table they said uh, they said we're going to remove your arm and he said um, just leave enough for me to hold a glove. Mm. And I thought, you know what? <laughs> This kid thinks he can still pitch. And, yeah, he uh, wasn't. He wasn't giving up right from the beginning. No, uh, that wasn't in him. I guess he got that from his mama. I probably would have gave up and said, "Throw me in a dark hole somewhere." But, but um, yeah, he. That, that's been that's the thing kind of haunted me. You know, as a journalist, you always look for quotes, and that was the one. Um, just leave enough for me to hold my glove, and <laughs> and I, I'm like, all right, kid. <laughs> and we're in there and he's got his arm, his arms gone. You're looking at your kid and he doesn't have his arm and it's all, all gauzed up and you're looking at it and, and all these people around us. I think somebody that night had gotten drunk and fell in the, um, <laughs> in the aquarium at Bass Pro down the street at the pyramid. And, and Landon looks at me and said, did that guy just say he fell in? <laughs> 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 he never, he never missed a beat. He never lost his sense of humor. He never lost his sense of, I'm going to do this, you know, and, and I kept asking people, I'm like, when's this kid going to crash? And they said, oh, he'll crash. Well, if he's going well, to crash. He did, he did have the opportunity for one of the most unique um, high school yearbook quotes. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you saw it. but <laughs> I did. I did. Yeah, he never lost his sense of humor. You can share with everybody what he said. I'm, tr- I'm going to try to see. Uh, I think he said, I always knew four years of high school would cost me an arm and a leg. That's right. <laughs> and, and that's that's classic Landon. He he went to a fraternity party. I think it was a year to the day, and I sit around still moping because I'm anniversary of this horrible thing is coming up, you know. And I get a picture, and it's Landon as the Black Knight from uh, Monty Python, you know, the one, the one, the one where the, it's a comedy routine they do where the guy says, you know, it's only a scratch, and uh-huh. they're they're removing his limbs and. And, and that's kind of landed Wilson. It, hey, it's only a scratch. It's only a scratch. You know, uh, that's kind of the way he works, which definitely helped me and his mom through it. I promise you that. Was there a little bit of relief when you realized that he was going to make it? Uh, well, I mean, you know, uh, that he's going to be alive is, is, is um, yeah, it, it, that's instant relief. Because because when I walked up, we walked up to the scene. They said, "This is the kid's parents," and and I go, oh, and that confirmed it when they said kid. And then yeah. I see he's alive. And then I look around at his body. And then I just kind of go into a, uh, in the book, I kind of do it as a Howard Cosell. This Howard Cosell doing an old seventies, I lead foreman fight or something. Boy, he's lucky to still be on his feet. And I was talking about me, but, yeah. but my wife, um, she didn't miss a lick. She's a rock, you know, Landon's a rock. I'm the weak link in the chain right there, you know. <laughs> Hey, I, I think any of us out there listening that are parents could certainly relate. Um, uh, until you go through something like that, it's hard to even know what you would do. Um, how long was he actually uh, in the hospital? In the hospital, I think uh, around 50 days, 50 days in the hospital. And um, he was, he had, he would, <laughs> I describe a lot of this too, of course, uh, he had a big room and uh, they said they never got as much mail. They never had as many visitors. Um, it was, a, and, and we spent a lot of time explaining it to people, you know, this is a teenager. His friends are real important. And uh, one of the questions I would ask somebody walking by was, you don't have any amps to go with that guitar, right? That, that, <laughs> that's acoustic, right? Uh, don't, get, don't get us thrown out of here because this is the only place we have. But um it was a, and by the time that was a big deal, you know, you're a teenager, senior year, and you want to be with your friends. And it got to that point where they need to let me go home because if they don't let me go home, I'm going to put this electric wheelchair on Interstate 40 and, and go east. And well, and you and, were there during Christmas time. So he, yeah, Thanksgiving, uh, Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Did he, was he able to uh, continue school from the hospital? Yeah, he did. He did. They would give him work, and his his teachers worked real well with him. He was fortunate in that he's a he's a pretty good student. He's um, very very smart. Uh, like that, like I said, on that twenty nine on the ACT that at the school they had a thirty club. <laughs> Landon made a twenty nine. He said he asked he asked Coach Seymour, 
there at the school. He said, hey, can you put my picture around the corner and make a close enough club? <laughs> they said, they said, not quite, Landon. Nice try, though. <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, he kept up with school work. And then he got back. Of course, a small town community, some of the same first responders, uh, when his first day of school, they, they did like a, I don't know, a parade or something. All the police and whatever gave him a police escort to school, you know, so he comes back to school <laughs> with lights of flashing and sirens and everything else. And he comes back in the school, which was, was kind of was kind of a unique thing. Small town, you know, that, you know, some people don't like living in a small town, but that's what you get when you live in a small town, you know. That's pretty and, neat, I thought. He, he, he knew almost from the get-go that he was going to end up uh, back playing baseball again. Uh, what, what, were you, what did you think? Well, I, I, I talk about it a little bit in the book, and he, he asked me what I think, and I go through the deal, you know. Um, possibly, you know, maybe you get back to one of these small colleges and they'll give you a shot, you know, and it's going to take a little time. And, and his leg was like in a rector set because a piece of the bone was missing, and it looked like a – uh, he, I think he says, if I ever have kids, I'm going to tell them I got bit by a shark off the coast of Maui surfing. But, but, um, it, it, it was leg was in a record set and he asked me and I said, man, you might make it back. And there's one point in the book where, you know, he's riding with me and, and, and lightning boats and thunder and, uh, very, very frightening. Whatever the song goes, <laughs> thunder boats and lightning, very, very frightening. He says, oh no, <laughs> I'm coming back. I'm going to play ball my senior year. And from that point on, it was, um, I'm, I'm climbing Everest. And he did, you know, it was just a pitcher's mound, less than 12 inches high. But, but to him, it was very much, uh, or, or in my view, it was very much uh, like climbing Everest. And all I can tell you is he did it. <laughs> amazed me. Um, it amazed me. Now, I'm, I'm a baseball dad, which kind of puts skepticism on me and, and when I went to write it, I'm like, is it really that much of a story? Because in journalism school, you know, they say, don't write about your pet turtle, your sister, your uncle. And but but as I thought about it, I thought, you know, you let this one get away and you don't write about it. That's going to almost be a sin right here because <laughs> some amazing stuff went down with this one. And, and uh, fortunately, I was able to put it all together and he pulled it off, um, pulled it off. How much time between the accident and when he was back pitching again? Well, he got hurt on October 26, and he pitched the third game of the season. Um, pitched the third game of the season, I think, around the first week of April, April 3rd, April 5th, something like that. Um, he pitched, and in, in, we didn't even know. You know he, he, we didn't really know. One of my friends is a basketball coach, and he said, you know, I mean, I knew he was going to rehab and uh, physical therapy and all this stuff, and, and I knew he was doing all this. And I'm kind of like, I'm removing myself from it. Kind of, kind of, it, it's too much of a band aid to pull off that he won't if he doesn't make it, you know. And and they sent me videos, and there he was pitching <laughs> in the gym. And uh, next thing I know, I've, we're going to the third game of the year, and he calls me. He said, "Hey, <laughs> I got him on speakerphone." He says. Uh, you don't care if I pitch today, do you? <laughs> I said, oh. and, and of course, uh, and I, I talk about this in the book, his leg hadn't grown back together. Uh, no doctor has said, uh, no doctor has said, get back on the mound. Uh, as a matter of fact, we were at his, his uh, ortho guy later on, and we're sitting there talking. He's already like pitched five or six games. And the doctor says, and Len said, well, when, when can I pitch again? And the doctor says, and he just pulls some metal rods or something out of his foot with blood on the floor. And the doctor says, I don't think he's quite ready for that yet. And Landon looks over at me and I look at him and and I said, did, and I thought to myself, did Landon just wink at me? And, and it's one of those things where it was scary, but if I hadn't let him do it, I would have regretted that more than I would anything else you know what i mean of course it was uh, scary dangerous silly and i explain all that to nobody I, my wife and i made the decision total risk taking total but 
hey, you got X number of months to be a senior and X number of months really to play ball. Um, saddle up and one of the lines things he says is um uh, some whatever that saddle up quote is from john wayne you know <laughs> when you're scared to death you get in the saddle anyway or something like yeah. that yeah and you know damn the torpedoes full steam ahead and there he went so um again i i i was kind of amazed in fact if, if i didn't write down the story as a journalist it's gonna be the one that got away and and you probably know that as a writer yourself there's all these things, especially a photographer too. You see these things in your daily life and you hear about these things and you think that needs to be, that needs to be recognized or that needs to be written down or that photo needs to be taken. And, and it's the one that got away if you don't do it, you know, or that person needs to be interviewed and that person passes away and you go, wow, that page from a history book has been torn out and I missed it. So I'm just glad I got it all. I, I did it. I, I, I sat down and, and, and wrote it all out. I'm, I'm just glad I got it there. You know, I got, got, got the story out. Now I know that, uh, uh, from reading the book, um, that faith played a big part in, uh, this, um, whole experience. You want to tell us a little bit about that? Well, it's one of those things that you're in the middle of the storm, you know, and, and you got to have an anchor. (laughs) And I don't think I can get a better symbol than that. But um, somebody, I wrote a column a long time ago, and they said, well, how do you describe faith? And I, I was a, I, I ran bird dogs a lot. And I said, well, it's like having that bird dog that points three or four miles away. You know he's pointed. <laughs> do you have faith to go through all those briars and brambles to get there? And, and uh, the answer is yes, you better. Um, it it it, it was an amazing thing to me. I, after I came home from all this and I got home and I would tell people the story, I kind of got this, <laughs> this feeling that, that, uh, that I don't know if they were looking at me like Moses come down from the mountain <laughs> or what, but I felt like I was glowing for a few days because I'd been so close and seen so much and had so many pieces fall perfectly in harmonious. Um, uh, is it just, was too perfect for it to be a mistake and I, I don't know I, my faith you know I looked around what Lennon was doing I looked around what my wife was doing all these people praying for us you know uh, again I'm the weak link in the chain I was the one that had to be bolstered and boosted and uh and and the the faith I had around me uh, was unbelievable and uh you know if I see that bird dog pointed out there at three or four miles right now, I'm running. I, I believe it. <laughs> That's great. We're going to take a quick break, and when we get back, we're going to find out what Landon's doing today. All right, thank you. After your visit to Discovery Park in Union City, Tennessee, take a walk along the streets of the revitalized downtown and discover restaurants, shops, a tree-lined park, and historic landmarks. If you love the great outdoors, you'll enjoy the nearly 2,000 acres of bird habitats at Lake Issam National Wildlife Refuge, and there's lots to see and do at Real Foot Lake. To plan your visit to Union City or other towns in northwest Tennessee, visit tnvacation.com. I hope you're enjoying the Real Foot Forward podcast from Discovery Park of America. If you are, please be sure to subscribe, give us a great rating, and leave a positive review on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. So I'm talking today uh, with Taylor Wilson, who's written a book about the accident and recovery of his son, Landon. Uh, So tell us how's Landon doing today and what's he up to? Oh, well, he's, he's down at Mississippi state ringing that cowbell, uh, <laughs> one arm, I guess he's putting it, putting double time on ringing that bell, but, uh, he's, he's, he really, we were worried when he went off to school, of course, you know, with, with coming back from his accident, but, but he has really fit in down at Mississippi state and he really enjoys it down there. He's a senior and, um, doing really well. Um, uh, what's he majoring in? Oh Lord. Communications. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Well, I tried to looking, tell him, go ahead. I tried to tell him that I didn't know if there was actually an occupation out there for storytelling anymore. And I tried to warn him, but you know, 
Uh, we talked about the DNA of a storyteller. If it's in him, it's it's probably going to have to come out somewhere. So I hope he can make it work. He's he's taking his uh, law school admittance test or something this week. So that may be another option. Uh, it'd probably be better than being a, a writer, but we'll see. You never know. You never know. Now, I noticed on his Facebook page that he's been trying out prosthetic arms. Is he? Oh, yeah. He, he's, he's done. He's. He's got a couple of arms, and um, the numbers on that is 75% of uh, people that lose an arm don't don't use anything. And he uses it some, but mostly he, he goes without it. Um, he's got a um, prosthetic, electronic prosthetic, and it's pretty fancy and high-tech and everything. But, but it, the, the leg, um, the legs, they've mastered that. It, uh, people can go in without a, a loss loss of a leg and walk out literally that day. Um, but the arm and the hand, the hand and the fingers do so many things that they haven't really perfected that in the way of prosthetic, you know, and, and you got to see that as a tool, what a specific tool, what I need to do. Um, you know, and he, he's had different things, but, but a lot of times he just doesn't wear one at all. He just, he, he's gone. He's gotten into golf, and he, he golfs a lot. He just he, he just he does one one arm. You know, he's he's a big old kid, six six. Does he still uh, play baseball? No, uh, he uh, he play. He, he had a he had some people want him to come play, and Landon being Landon, he he kind of this was his saying. I think I put this in the book. He says, uh, "Dad, I don't want to go somewhere and be a mascot." <laughs> yeah understand i don't want to be the uh i don't want and, and i translated all that in my head i knew exactly what he meant and um I, he he didn't want to be the token or whatever and i want to go play and of course his leg even today he's still got some surgeries to go on his leg he's got a titanium rod in his leg and he's got some stuff to do he would have never gotten his his legs in a condition probably to to pitch at the college level i don't think no maybe but i that's tough. I'm curious uh, for folks out there that are li- listening that have their own story to tell um, as a storyteller and as a writer, somebody who's had uh, multiple books published. Um, what's your process that you go through to write? How do you write and how do you get it published? Well, this book, I, I went to Hill Helen, uh, Jackie Hillman. I worked with her to Jackson Sun, and I wanted to spend so much more on the editorial. Um, and make sure everything was correct and right without errors that I couldn't see, you know, looking at the forest for the trees. But so I went through through our company and they've done really well with it. Um, but before I, I published one through the Jackson Sun, all my columns and uh, then I self-published and I did really well. But but I had a I, I had an audience, you know, I had a readership because I was in magazines, and newspapers and, and that kind of thing. So I kind of knew the ropes, and 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 they were all columns. Even this this book is a collection of letters, and it's it's me. It's, it's glove letters, play on love letters, and play on the fact that Leonard, you know, just gave me enough for my glove to hold my glove. But it's letters to Landon, and and, and I, I I went about this one time. I was trying to write it as a story, and and I said, man, I'm I'm not a marathon guy. I'm a sprinter. I'm a columnist. You know. <laughs> That's the way I work. I, I, I make that quick hit, and hopefully, I, I, I made you think or made you feel, you know. And and I and I came up with glove letters, and there was, and and, and that's kind of the way it, it all came out. It came out in letters to Landon, and and in the end, I thought, uh, and I told the publisher, I said, look, if if I don't end up with anything, but Landon looks back at this as an old old man and says, man. This is what my parents did. <laughs> this is what happened behind the scenes when I was lying on my back, you know, waiting eight surgeries. It, I, I caught it, but, you know, and maybe I'll have kids by then and say, hey, you know, this is something, you know, I wanted it all in a collection. I, again, I didn't want it to get away. I didn't want this story to be the one that got away. Are you uh, working on any uh, new books? Uh, I've got several ideas, um, several ideas, of course. Being in teaching now for the last 10, 11 years, <laughs> uh, this, 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 uh, people have said, they, they said, man, that made me cry more than uh, Bridges of Madison County. 
<laughs> and I said, well, my next one, I'm going to make you laugh. So um, my next book, I think, I think the direction I'm going to go with the next one, it, it's going to be, you know, humor straight out, all out, trying to make people laugh. And, uh, and I got a lot of things to laugh about from teaching, I promise you. <laughs> I bet, I bet. Well, and I did notice that uh, for for people who haven't who haven't uh, caught it yet, it, the name um, of the book is "Glove Letters: A Story of Perseverance, Prayer, and Baseball," and it's on Amazon. And I notice you've got all like the highest star reviews and lots of really great comments. So, congratulations on that. Yeah, I appreciate it. Um, what I say is a good story writes itself. You know it. Um, I don't know if that's a Guy Clark line. Maybe it was the song writes itself or something. But um, a good story writes itself. As a journalist, you sit around waiting on something good to happen, you know. And I grew up in a time where they uh, we were in the newsroom at college, and they'd say, "Man, is a day just like the day when Elvis died?" You know, <laughs> 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 something's going to happen, and and I, this happened to us, and. You know, did I want a ringside seat? Did I want to be in the ring? Did I want this to happen? No, but but it turned out so amazing that I just couldn't not tell it, you know. And, well, um, it's, a, it's a great it's, book, and um, I've heard a lot of positive things about it. Congratulations uh, to I you for the book. It. That's great. I appreciate it. I'm, I'm as scared of a compliment as I am a snake. You know? <laughs> well, just, and, you know. <laughs> and thank you for being um, on the podcast today as well, because I know you got more uh, important things to do than sit around and talk to us all day. Uh, I, I enjoyed it. I, I saw your book uh, about David Crockett, and uh, I was one of those kids that grew up with a, a coonskin cap on and charging up the hill with one of those old uh, rifles made over in Savannah, Tennessee at Paris Toy Company. But, but my uh, coonskin cap, I could never get my dad to buy the one with the real fur and everything. It always kind of looked like a commode cover, you know, and <laughs> and I just couldn't, I couldn't charge the hill or, or defend the Alamo just as respectfully with a commode lid cover on my head. But I tried. <laughs> that was a really good book. That's really good. Yeah. Really thank you so much. Enjoyed. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. We'll have, yes, to, sir. We'll, we'll have to get you over here at some point to do a book signing here in Union City. Y'all just let me know. I, that, that's a really neat place y'all have up there. I know that. Really neat. Thank you. We appreciate it. And thank you to all you listeners who've joined Taylor, Emily, and me today at Discovery Park of America. Our mission here is to inspire children and adults to see beyond. To plan an experience here for you and your family, visit discoveryparkofamerica.com.